Hey everyone, we're Drew and Katie Taylor with Catholic Link and we're passionate about helping you reach new heights in your faith. If you're new here, hit subscribe and definitely check out the links in the description because we are going to leave a ton of resources to help you celebrate Holy Week. So let's jump in. What is Holy Week? I think we need to acknowledge that the church gives us this week to lean in, to understand the Paschal mystery. The life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus is summed up in this week, the salvation history. Mm. So it starts with Palm Sunday, which is Jesus's entry into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to Holy Thursday, which is the Last Supper. Good Friday, which is Jesus dies on the cross. Holy Saturday, which we wait in anticipation for Easter Sunday. And so we're going to give you five ways to develop traditions for yourself and for your family right now. All right. So the first way is going to be be intentional about this week. Don't let this week just be the same as every other week in the year. This is the most important week in the church's liturgical calendar. So make time for prayer. Uh, make time for silence. Just be extremely intentional about trying to make this week the best week of the Lent and leading up to Easter. And this is a week that you can double down. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a sacrifice that you want to do this week that maybe it's silencing mm -hmm. your social media or TV or sweets or whatever you... Cold showers. Cold showers. But really looking at opportunities to detach from things so that you can attach to the Lord, yeah. which I think is the critical element uh, that Father Mark Mary talks about and how it's for holiness is, is that attachment, that we're making the space in order to bring Christ into it. Mm -hmm. So the second way is prayer. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're moving those things to dive deeper into our relationship with Christ. And so the first, I would say the perfect uh, prayer for this week is the Stations of the Cross, Yes, which Lent last year, Stations of the Cross, specifically in Holy Week, I really think led to the name of our youngest, Veronica, mm -hmm. as our three-year-old at the time got the opportunity to really intentionally pray through the Stations of the Cross and fall in love with St. Veronica. Mm -hmm. uh, the next would be Good Friday. I starts the Divine Mercy Novena, and so yeah. nine days to prepare to get a little extra mercy for yourself, for the whole world. Mm -hmm. Goodness knows we need it. Uh, and then the idea of silencing technology, definitely uh, from 12 to 3, having some mm -hmm. intentional silence and prayer in there, the time traditionally Christ was on the cross on Good Friday specifically. Mm -hmm. And then if you're able to go from 12 on Friday all the way until Easter, yeah. uh, you can do lights out. So no, no technology being not only just your phone or TV, but also you know, maybe use flashlights mm -hmm. uh, to prepare for the light of the world really coming in in that resurrection when the world is so dark waiting. Our kids love flashlights. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, it'd be so, it's so fun. Uh, the So the third, third way. the third way to celebrate Holy Week that we really recommend is to attend the liturgies. So uh, Palm Sunday is a Sunday. So it's a holy day of obligation. <laughs> Go to that. The... The next one's going to be uh, Holy Thursday. So Holy Thursday Mass is not a Holy Day of Obligation, but we really recommend going to church that day because on Holy Thursday, we celebrate the Last Supper and the Mass is structured and celebrating and participating in the Last Supper. So that'll be Holy Thursday. Good Friday, there are no Masses in the sense that there, there's no consecration of the Eucharist on Good Friday, but most churches have services, some type of service available, a veneration of the cross, a burial of Jesus ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then for now, once you get to Saturday, if you are able to attend the Easter Vigil Mass, we highly recommend doing that because you will get essentially all of salvation history in the readings. Now, it is longer, and in full disclosure, we will not be going this year because taking kids to that mass is very, very long. But if you do have the ability to go to the Easter Vigil Mass, we highly recommend it. Yeah, and I would I would definitely want to echo the honesty there of entering into discernment of whether that Thursday, Friday, Saturday liturgy are something that 
your family is called to. Mm-hmm. I, and this is like heartbreaking to me. And the reason that we're encouraging you, I think, is to go is because I like long for it. But I have to realize that liturgies that are at 6 p.m. is after my kids go to bed. And therefore, like, it not rational for my phase of life. And so to also love yourself through that. And one of the ways that we can do that is to do intentional activities to bring the faith alive in our home, in our domestic church. So our fourth way to celebrate is the intentional activities. But I do actually want to rewind because we forgot to share our number one thing in the intentionality is to take off. Yeah. Thursday and Friday, and to have this time, this intentionality, which is going to open up space to go to the liturgies. It's going to open up space to do all these activities. So in these activities, first, we'll start with Palm Sunday. I Hopefully you are able to attend Mass, Mm. uh, but the idea of still at home acting out that arrival in Jerusalem. So Mm. making palm branches, if you're lucky like us and live in Arizona, (laughs) you can get a palm branch. You can get a palm branch. (laughs) We have those. Lots of and time. then wave them singing Hosanna in the highest, reading out of the gospel of Matthew, the idea of of that procession, mm-hmm. of really letting that come alive as a family. And then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's some traditions of like cleaning your house, but there's also just time and space there to do activities mm-hmm. for the Holy Week uh, because your Thursday will get very busy. Or maybe catch up on the activities that you were planning on doing all of Lent Mm -hmm. that you fell behind on. Double down. So that way (laughs) you can get to Holy Thursday. Absolutely. And then on Holy Thursday, things that we recommend, and we'll again put a lot of different activities in the description below, but Holy Thursday is our favorite, is a story meal. So mm-hmm. every item on the menu represents a part of the passion of Jesus. So it goes through the gospel of Mark chapter 14, or there's a crucifixion version, which goes through chapter 15. And so doing that with our kids and letting the story come alive through their senses, which is a great gift in the Catholic church. You know, mm-hmm. we in this get to bring our taste buds and our sense of smell and also eyes to it. I, in that special meal mm-hmm. and then the and it's something our kids talk about all year long and even just if it was drew and i i think that it would be a really uh, great tradition for us to incorporate and to help that gospel come mm-hmm. into our lives then after that there's also to celebrate the passover mm-hmm. and so we have a christian seder meal uh, down below and that you can check out even if you just make leavened bread Mm. and do that or Un- unleavened, unleavened bread unleavened, unleavened. unleavened bread Not slightly important leavened yes the opposite of leavened <laughs> thanks <laughs> and then with that i uh, also a washing of the feet mm. and so for drew to be able to wash my feet in our uh, children's feet it's just really feet. a really and, special moment for yeah. me and for our children to wash our feet yeah it's really cool to watch our our oldest son Mm -hmm. wash our girl's feet that's uh i think that's really cool as well it is and even mine who Mm -hmm. serves him like you know (laughs) all day long (laughs) so it is it is an opportunity for him to love on us Mm -hmm. and then the good friday so we talked a little bit about coming into silence in that day and then stations of the cross is definite uh, Mm -hmm. but Then on Saturday, what we like to do is to have a fire. We like to sit outside. We're in Phoenix, around a fire. And uh, read the mass readings for the Easter Vigil, which walk you through salvation history, through covenant, through creation, uh, and really why Jesus was crucified. We also make... Uh, oh, I'm going to hit my mic. How am I doing? Uh, these Paschal candles, which are just our home version of what you see in the church, which is what is lit on a baptism or on Easter Mitchell when mm-hmm. the church people are coming in to the church. Uh, and so super easy craft as well to show that the light of the world has overcome the darkness and will forever. So the last way that we recommend, the fifth way uh, to celebrate Holy Week is to celebrate Easter hard. Mm -hmm. You guys have been fasting in the desert for 40 days, giving up uh, things in order to grow closer to the Lord, to make space for the Lord. And so if we don't know how to fast well, then we can't feast well. And if we can't feast well, 
then we won't be able to fast well. It, it's just, we as Catholics need to reclaim the idea that we need to be joyful and mm -hmm. this needs to be the best day of the year. And so spend time with family and friends if you're able to. Uh, make resurrection cookies for the kids or uh, you know, have a drink. These are these are good things to just enjoy the fact that we are saved to celebrate the resurrection. And oh, by the way, Easter is an octave, so you can celebrate hard for eight days. Yeah. Keep Christ as the center. We have seen great fruit in going to mass first thing before mm -hmm. a family brunch or time with our friends and then to do resurrection easter eggs and there are so many different uh, ways to really keep christ in the food in the conversation in just the joy of the day of those eight days of the octave mm -hmm. and so we'll again put those down below but know that we are praying for you we're praying for your holy week mm -hmm. for your easter season for you to be able to fast well and to dive into the season with joy. And that's the last thing that I really want to highlight is pick the activities that bring you joy. They are a sacrifice because you have to do some planning and some work for them, but do them and choose to unite them to the cross, unite them to Christ's suffering and bring joy into your family. That learning about Christ, learning about our faith is something that we can enjoy. So go ahead and subscribe and, and like leave, the video. And leave a comment below. Uh, tell us what you guys are doing to celebrate Holy Week. Uh, if it's something from this video, then let us know. Or maybe it's a tradition that you have on your own. Uh, let us know how you're going to celebrate Holy Week. So we are praying for you guys until next time. And we are praying that you have the best Holy Week ever. God bless.